Quist, um, from Linköping University in Sweden. And um, a large part of this uh, work that I'm presenting was actually done by one of my uh, master students uh, when I was at Jönköping University, Asam. Um, so she couldn't be here to present it, unfortunately, so I, I have to do that. And uh, so if you have uh, questions related to the, the implementation and the tool, um, that's who you should send them to. So um, her email is also on the paper. And so um, the outline for the talk, uh, first I'm going to mention a little bit why do we need ontology testing and what is it, what do we mean with that, and maybe a little bit of a different term than what we normally use, um, and why aren't existing approaches enough, and then I'll briefly mention our contribution, so in 10 minutes I won't be able to go through everything, but uh, you can read the paper and you can ask questions if you want later on. Um, so just briefly mentioning what we, what we have done, uh, which is basically a, a general methodology, a meta model, and uh, the tool. Um, so first of all, a bit of motivation for ontology testing. So um, today we construct many ontologies that are actually intended to perform some, some task in some, some software system. So it has some requirements. We really wanted to answer some queries or perform some inference and so on. So these are the ontologies that are not, not divorcing from the, the software systems, as we heard <laughs> this morning, but who are actually marrying some software system. And we want them to use, uh, to use them inside the system for doing some particular task. Um, so in that case, it's important that they actually uh, conform to the requirements and do what, what we expect them to do. Um, another thing to note is also that um, today, and I think in a lot of talks we've heard this being mentioned, that today also ontologies are developed by people who are not really you know, well-trained ontology engineers, but maybe someone who wants to make a, a web ontology that, um, to use for some, some task in their system. So, um, and even if you are a trained ontology engineer, you do make some mistakes. We've seen this in our previous experiments uh, that even experienced people do make mistakes. So uh, testing is important. And uh, then we also have some more pragmatic motivations. Why do we need actually a methodology for, for testing? Well, um, it is not self-evident how to do testing. We've also seen that in previous experiments that we have done with, um, with users, that uh, it's not so easy to understand how can I actually test my requirements. So how do I actually test uh, if, um, if I can do these things I, I've promised now? And also, um, in relation to this, how do I document and store the results of my tests and uh, in some kind of... Uh, uh, in a practical way so that I can later retrieve my tests, rerun them, and so on. So all of these practical things that we're very used to when we do software testing, for example, but when we do ontologies, there's not really a framework for actually um, describing tests and uh, running tests and so on. So this is um, a, a very practical motivation. Um, and for us, ontology testing, well, it really means um, the task-focused verification of ontological requirements. So to verify that um, these requirements that we have on our ontology that are specific for the, for the task it's going to perform, that um, they really um, hold in the end when we've constructed the ontology. And uh, we have been working with three main types of tests. There may be others, uh, but these are the categories that we have um, discovered and worked with, or discovered, also many other people have <laughs> talked about these kinds of uh, tests, obviously. Um, so there's the verification of, of competency questions. So basically, if you have a competency question, you would like to be able to query the ontology for that information. That is uh, what competency questions normally uh, express. But in addition to that, it's also important to note that uh, not all competency questions are obviously um, lookup queries where you want uh, to just retrieve uh, assertions that you have in your knowledge base. You might want to do some inference <laughs> to actually produce those um, assertions first before you query for them. So this is kind of a, an addition to a competence question that it also requires some inference actually. And then, of, of course, you want to also test that inferencing, that it actually works, it actually produces 
um, those um, uh, statements that you want to query for. And finally, you uh, also want to be able to um, so see that what does the ontology, uh, what does it not allow? Uh, so what are the, the constraints I would like um, uh, to hold for my data that I would like the ontology to be able to, to check, so uh, to exclude the, the things uh, that uh, should not be allowed uh, using this, this model. And here we can uh, do tests uh, trying to provoke errors, so this is the, the term, uh, where we try to uh, add things that should not be allowed by our ontology. Uh, so these are the kinds of tests that we've been working on, but um, so why aren't existing approaches enough then? Well, uh, many of the existing evaluation approaches are not task focused. Basically, they don't uh, care about requirements of the ontology. They are more general. So we saw, for example, detecting um, uh, flaws here. This uh, last talk, uh, so many of these things are really general logical errors that you can make, and it's of course important to detect those, but also we want to see that we can actually ask the queries we want to ask, we can actually do the inference we want to do, and so on. So focusing on our task. Um, so there have been some approaches that also try to do that, um, but um, one uh, previous uh, approach, for example, the our unit test framework, um, was very focused on individual axioms and did not connect them to actual to requirements. Um, whereas there are uh, more recent approaches that also um, talks about really verification of requirements, like the ontology test, um, but it doesn't really um, support separation of concerns in the sense of testing one requirement at a time and uh, really um, documenting the tests for that requirement and also we find an important distinction between test cases and test trends where you want to describe a test case which is um, testing a, uh, a method for testing a certain requirement uh, whereas a test run I can run this test several times with different results uh, and I might want to store information about all these test runs so these are things that um, cannot be done with these previous approaches. Um, so for our contribution, um, we have the methodology, uh, which is uh, um, quite a general methodology. In the paper, you can see uh, you can see uh, the, um, the different steps exemplified as well. I will not go through uh, all the details here, but in principle, um, the important thing is that you test each requirement at a time. Uh, to focus on this particular, um, on one pr particular thing at a time, uh, determine the procedure of how to test it. You create a test case for it. Um, well, I will show you a little bit later what that means. And of course, you have to create some test data, determine what are the expected results that you want to have, for example, from a query, run the test and compare the results, analyze it in case it, there's something unexpected happening and you document it. And um, um, our tool that we have developed is uh, quite focused on the documentation of the testing, so to actually support storing information about the test case. And this is what we use this uh, meta model for, which describes the central concepts in our uh, methodology for testing. So we have the test case, which is actually um, uh, which is related to a, a requirement and so, then some kind of procedure that could be, for example, a Sparkle query uh, in case you're testing a, a competency question. Um, but then you run this test case, which generates then a test run. Um, so this test run is run by a person at some time on a particular ontology. And this ontology, it's a version actually of the ontology you're building. So the ontology there, you can see, uh, if you can read it, uh, is actually a member of what we have named an ontology history, which would be the set of all uh, ontology versions that you're working on when you're developing the ontology. Uh, so it's important to distinguish that you're, what you're testing is actually a version of your ontology. 
Um, and the test case can also be a part of a larger test suit to, to, to test some different aspects of your ontology, for example. This meta model um, is uh, available on this uh, link, and actually the picture is a little bit uh, different. It's an earlier version of the, of the meta model. Um, so what you actually get practically is something like this. Um, you get um, test cases that you can store as AL files, actually. Um, uh, which are then related to test runs or imported by a test run file, where you also import the ontology to test and um, your test data that you can uh, also store something else. So the, the test run is the, the, the place where you actually run your tests. And of course, this looks like, okay, we have a lot of different files and uh, it seems very complicated. So this is why we want to have the, uh, a tool there. So that uh, generates an interface to all these things, where you actually have forms for the user to fill out all this information, and then in the background, you store this information, as I showed on the previous slide, basically. So there is an early version of this uh, tool available that you can uh, uh, download and try out. It's uh, built for the Extreme Design tools, for the Neon Toolkit. Um, and the idea is uh, that uh, to guide you through this process and in particular the documentation and to store all of this, uh, this information about your tests, um, as well as to run them, of course. Uh, we have also experimented, I don't have time to uh, go through the results of this, but uh, with uh, generating some, uh, some tests automatically, um, based on competency questions, so um, generating Sparkle queries di directly from competency questions. We also saw a poster about that yesterday um, with some, uh, some similar uh, results, and we have found some interesting opportunities as well when we don't get any results, um, because actually that also tells us something um, that could tell us uh, what, what is actually the problem uh, of the ontology. If we cannot generate a test uh, it could be the, a problem of the terminology is not uh, um, good with respect to the competence questions and so on. So uh, you can read more about that in the, in the paper, actually. Uh, so just to conclude, um, we believe that um, testing needs to ta be taken seriously if uh, we want high-quality ontologies. Uh, and high-quality in this case means that actually performs their task in a good way. Uh, so we have proposed a methodology and a framework where we uh, define these notions of the test case and the test run and separate them in order to be able to properly document the whole process of testing. Um, future work, of course, um, uh, includes to improve the, the tool support uh, even further and um, do some more large-scale evaluations of the methodology. We have used it several times, but mainly with students and so on. Um, also, an interesting aspect is to look at test, really test-driven development, which would mean to actually um, generate the tests before you build the ontology. So we are thinking about that as well. Okay, thank you.